Okay, we're back in action. Welcome to episode 3 of the Realm slash the Thou Southlands Temple of Elemental Evil. Fruit of Designs number 5. Alright, so it was my fault all along. I missed this, but here we are. There's the gate. 8 foot high gate. We leave this way. The road leads east into the realm, passing beyond numerous farms on the work side of a great tower. If we click leave, do you leave for the moat house? Yes. We are at the moat house. So, you stop at the sound of men rushing through the forest towards you. They come in and out of view, darting from tree to tree with dark cloaks flashing out behind them. Laughter brings your attention to Grimm. Fools, who would stand against the power of chaos? Look upon your deaths coming from the four elemental corners. Ernok still with us. Temple veteran. Temple veteran. So use your darts. That's Temple Veteran. Oof. Okay, use your arrows. Die. Tessa. Can't go there, okay. Go down, there, 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 attack. Zelda. Because I bought new arrows, I didn't uh, equip them. Missed. Jinji. Oh. We gotta get you out of there. Carlo. Nice shot. Oh, he's up here. Okay, so move. Flank him. And kill him. 17 XP. So she's here for valuables. Let's have Amanda... Detect. Nothing is magical. But Jinji can take the ring mails. They're worth 200 apiece. Left, you want to go back and limit? No. Let's 
scrub of thorns, thistles, weeds, and shrubs grow thickly along the edge of the track which leads to the ruins. Even the track is mostly overgrown and cluttered with fallen branches and trees. Here and there it is washed out, in other places a mire. Some game evidently still follows the pathway, however, and after a mile or so, faint traces can be seen. But even considering this, going is slow and it takes over two hours to trudge on foot. Considerable hacking and clearing is necessary to make the way passable. After two miles, the track turns more northerly, the land begins to sink and become boggy. Tall marsh plants grow thickly where cattails and tamaracks do not. Off to the left can be seen the jagged silhouette of the moat house. Oh, this is crazy. We're hacking our way through. The track here is only about 15 feet wide or so, with crumbling embankments making travel near the edge dangerous. The bogs stink. The vegetation appears dense and prolific, but somehow sickly and unhealthy. Creepers and vines throw their strangling loops over the skeletons of dead saplings and living bushes alike. The rushes and cattails rustle and bend to a, even to a slight zephyr. Weird bird calls, croakings, and other unwholesome sounds come faintly across the fen. The land of the side of the trail sinks into a small pool concealed beneath layers of sinking scum and creepers. As you move carefully past, giant frogs explode from the pond in a fury, lashing out with their tongues. Oh, giant frogs, bro. I shouldn't have used that detect, though, so quickly. Froggies. Dead froggy number one. Don't you have your darts on? Yes. They're out of aim range. Okay, just delay your turn. Fourteen damage. giant frogs. He shares 36, the creatures have no valuables. Looking ahead, you brace yourself to enter into the ruins of the moat house, the last bastion of the temple of elements of evil to fall before the forces of good. Oh, snap. The chains of the drawbridge were broken when the moat house fell. Since that time, the wood has been left to rot. You make your work carefully over the creaking boards, each threatening the way and splinter in your legs. The door is hanging open on one great hinge, the other is splintered and hold, but still in position, wedged and shored, closed from the inside. What ranger is among your band? That would be Carlo. Carlo frowns at the broken debris all around you. The upper portion of the tower has collapsed and the interior is dark. From the door you can see the glint of coins in the rubble. Your entrance provokes the attack of a great wolf spider. It leaps from the ruined steps overhead. Alright, wolf spider. The creature held no valuables. 
Bits of rubbish are close to 100 copper pennies and nearly 40 silver pieces, and in every box about the size of a large book, which might fetch a decent price in town. Gemstones, one. Pieces of gold, four. Steps up into the finished floors of the moat house keep. What rangers among your band? Carlo. Your friend confirms that some traffic, either human or animal, or perhaps otherwise, comes this way. Let's go. It is dark in here. Reluctantly, you light a torch so you can see. This was once a great audience chamber, shown by the tattered banners and tapestries on the walls, destroyed furniture, the heaps of rotting cloth thrown into the corners. Once rightly appointed, once richly appointed, it has been thoroughly searched, sacked, and despoiled. Leaves and dirt cover the floor, and cobwebs hang from the walls and ceiling above. Looking up, you see that pieces of beams and chunks of stone poke through, indicating that the upper stories of the place are totally destroyed and likely to be impassable to anything larger than a rat. So no second floor. Star starving giant rats swarm up the stairwell. Cyrus's way though, good. Weeps. Huh. Tessa can sweep with her attacks now. That's interesting. So can Jinji. He killed one. surrenders. 19 points and the creatures held no valuables. Rubble strewn steps lead up to the south. All kind of doors, so let's... Oh, 
we can rest out here. That is excellent. That is great. Let's pick the door. You enter a ruined chamber only to find brigands. Arrows trained on you from behind the remains of crates and boxes. Oh my, there's a lot of them. And a lot of them have light crossbows. Well, oh, she's got magic missile. Might as well. Three points of damage. He may be in trouble. Furnox stuck. too far away. Cyrus fell asleep? Gingy fell asleep? Oh my, oh my, oh my. Wow. This really went down fast. Why can't I shoot him? Why can't I shoot? Bandage? Cyrus is bandaged. Okay. Full blow. Fernock gets up there, that's nice. And for some reason, Carlo. Oh, because he was in, he was being, uh, he was in, he was being crowded. <laughs> she just, man, it just stabbed him. I love that. Temple warrior hit points 15. Yeah, we're going to have to take care of him. Yeah, we're slaying him now.
169, we searched the area for valuables. Two gems. 101 gold. Oh, items. Oh my. Is any of this magical? A necklace! Possibly that spear, so... And that chain mail. Alright, so Cyrus is gonna grab... The necklace, the spear, and the chain mail. Jinji's gonna grab... The plate mail, the ring mail. Okay, he's overloaded. Tess is gonna grab... Ring mail, ring mail, ring mail. The rest of that stuff can saw it off. Crystal just left. Do you want to come back and claim it? No. We are left standing, standing in a chamber floored in black flagstones with ebon colored wall hangings now burned and tattered. The brigands pitch bedrolls in odd corners and the remains of fires can be noted. Okay, we'll save in part B. So my mistake in the first episode, look, the brigands buried a chest in the rubble here. Working it open, you reel that it holds 2,000 copper pennies, two bolts of cloth, a crystal flagon, and four goblets, and a wooden box with ivory handles. 340 XP, search here for valuables. Oh my gosh, eight gemstones. 20 pieces of gold. Party's discovered a secret door to the east. That would be this way. Cramped steps lead down to the south. The tunnel is strewn with the remnants of smashed cobwebs. You are attacked by foraging rats. Is that what's going on here? Wow, 
missed all three. Hit Tessa for two points. Die. Miss. Good job, Fernock. So remember in that door, there is, lying on the floor of this rubble strewn chamber is a dead man dressed in forest green leathers. His right leg is swollen through his armor. His flesh is discolored. Do you investigate the body ahead of you? Yes. As you move forward to examine the corpse, a larger pile of rubble to the left ships. From it lunges the largest snake you have ever had the misfortune of seeing. Oh my... Whoa, that's a big snake. Fernox not afraid. Cyrus is still down. We've got to take care of him. We've got to lighten up Gingy's load a bit. doing damage. I guess it's hard to shoot a target, a snake, let alone throw a dart at it. Whoops. Undo that. Gigi will get there. One of these blows will land, those arrows will land. Gingy to the rescue, Gingy to the rescue. There's nothing of value in the corpse. Apparently his friends looted him before leaving his corpse to rot. Well, that's just lovely. Here's the lair of a giant reptile. Within are several dead shed skins and the bones of precious meals. In the rubble, you also notice a finely bejeweled dagger. It is not much of a weapon, but would serve as a fine ceremonial piece. Uh, uh, ooh, a jewel. Uh, uh, all right. We've got to get serious here. There's doors on either side. Um... Safe to rest here. Save in part B. Let's fix. The party's repose is interrupted. With the brigands moving about the moat hearth, it is not safe to rest here. Alright, so cast, cure light wounds. Yourself. Cast your light wounds on Carlo. Cast your light wounds on yourself.
still got that bless we're saving. This room was once very opulent, obviously a place where many expensive furnishings were, for the bits and tatters that remain look rich. As you step into the room, a score of bats flutter about madly, enraged by your torches. It takes several minutes before they filter out through holes in the ceiling and you can enter again. You encounter a band of brigands. With a shout for help, they rush to engage you. Kill them, Jinji. Oh, Carlo's stuck. Oh, he can get away. save again in the B slot go in this room once the quarters of a castle troop leader or some other petty official this place is now a total wreck the bed was chopped to pieces the furniture smashed or taken your careful search reveals nothing of interest can we encamp here though Is interrupted. Despite strong misgivings, you try to bed down in the moat house. After a few hours, you're discovered by the denizens. Uh. Okay, I'll be right back. I'm going to load because... Um, I didn't think it actually sleep. I thought it would give me the same error message as before, like you can't bed down here. So, one second. Okay. So let's come in here. So just know that if I rest again, it's going to be not good. Rats scurry away at your entrance. This place is otherwise empty and shows no sign of a recent occupant. A broken table seems to label this as an old conference chamber. Behind a splintered wall case here you find a very fine broadsword. Broadsword. Cyrus is going to take it. I actually don't want Cyrus using this ring of invisibility. I want him to trade it to Carlo. And I want Carlo to put it on. That gets him out of attacks of opportunity when he needs to move. Alright, nothing in there. Down this way now. The remains of moldering foodstuffs and kitchen work tables are visible under a thick layer of dust. Here stands a rather fine wooden cast. Much to your chagrin, though, it has been left empty by pillagers of days gone by. I'm 
actually going to save here and say thank you for joining me. We'll save under game A this time. Um, I got some stuff to do actually, so I wanted to cut this a little short, but smashing the episode. We figured out how to explore the moat house. I will see you guys next time. Much love, peace, joy, and light to your life. And uh, stick with me. It's getting cool.